Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Dan with 60 Second Docs Live here with uh, another Thursday installment for you all. Um, people are loving this, so we're keeping it coming to you. Today we have a fantastic guest, uh, somebody I'm really personally very excited to meet, who's taught uh, some really interesting things that people can learn from, and I am very excited to uh, take that in and, and uh, get to the next step with my yoga work. I'm a newbie there, so um, we're excited to introduce Olivia Mead uh, of First Responder Yoga. So come on out, Olivia. I'm here. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Hi, Dan. I'm so happy to see you. Yeah, happy to see you. Happy to see you. Um, thank you so much for joining us. I know you've got a lot going on. Well, thanks for having me. Anything, anytime I can talk about this work, and especially with you guys, I'm all about it. Great. Yeah, we're stoked. Uh, we feel like this is something as we were all kind of, you know, looking at of the 600 videos we released, like who, you know, can we bring on that people would be, you know, really uh, excited to see and that could they, and, and, and they could learn from. Mm -hmm. um, and your name came right to the top of the list. You know, obviously, uh, there's crazy times out there. And, um, you know, I think everybody's trying to figure out you know, their own way to, to, to make do and, and, and ideally thrive. And I think that like, you know, as we kind of come up on states releasing regulations and things like this, that, you know, a lot of folks, myself included, are kind of looking at like, okay, so how can I like, you know, um, get back to a, a new normal that's, you know, healthy and sustainable. Um, so I'm pretty excited to talk with you uh, about what it is that you do, because I feel like everybody can learn from your work. Um, and we can also kind of like learn something new uh, for other people, like how this can be, you know, more beneficial to uh, first responders and then support your cause. Um, so I guess I'll just jump into the first line of questioning here um, and just talk a little bit, I guess, off the bat about like what it is you do. So what do you do? Yeah, well, I, th I love that you said that word thrive. And I think that's a great segue into what we do. So basically what we do is we teach yoga to first responders. Um, and it might be, but how we do it is job specific and culturally informed. So we're not asking first responders to just come to a yoga studio. We're tailoring the yoga so it's very specific to their needs. And it's not, it's not just for them to calm down and, and regulate, but that's why I love that word thrive. It's how to enhance performance. We're teaching them to process the inevitable stress they see every day, um, to build resilience towards incoming stress, and then to enhance their performance in work and, and in life. And it's interesting because first responders see more trauma, loss, death, destruction every single day on the job that you and I may never see that amount in our entire lives. And, and in one shift, they're seeing this. And what's interesting about this time right now is all of us are encountering this global stress. So we need these tools to process stress, build resilience and thrive and enhance performance and, and find the opportunity in this time, not just try to survive it, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, it's so fascinating. Like, you know, when we first saw this pitch, it was kind of, it made sense suddenly like, oh my God, of course, you know, uh, yoga is, is a useful tool in the belt of first responders. But I guess like, as we've kind of learned more about this, you know, we're figuring out that it's much more than just, um, you know, being able to like handle uh, your stress levels and, and um, you know, thrive under those circumstances, but also like that, that, breathing that there's tons of you know physical uh, uh gifts to be had like can you talk a little bit about like why yoga for first responders yeah so a lot of times when people hear the word yoga the first thing they think of is stretching or relaxation right. uh, or i hear like oh yeah cops could use some stretching it's it's beyond stretching or relaxation that what we're doing what we're really doing is teaching people how to be with high stress and how to regulate from that stress afterwards. Got and it. the key to that is the breath work because your breathing is in connection with your mind, your emotions, and your stress. Like right now, if I was on this call like this, <sighs> you would think she's stressed out. She's not okay. I but definitely would. Right? I if I was like, hi, Dan. <laughs> I mentioned this. I mean, right? I'd be like, look, the people need to know 
Right. Why? And like activated. Yeah. yeah. But if I was just like nice and calm and relaxed, you'd be like, oh, she's cool. She's chill. Right. That was how you were. Just was like that? with the Good. kind of hello and there's an email. Well, and I'm glad you mentioned that because that's not natural. I mean, and what I mean by that is like, listen, we're about to do an interview together and, and stress isn't always bad. It's, it's not always the bad stress or the right. distress. There's something called you stress and you stress is the good kind of stress, the challenge kind of stress. Think of a football player about to go on the field. That's stressful, right? But it's the good kind of challenge stress. Yeah. So I'm excited to be on this call. I'm energized. I'm ready to go, but I still have to be in control of that activation. Right. So before we even got on the call, I'm doing my breath work. So I'm in control of my mind and my thoughts to be able to speak to you clearly. Yeah, it's fascinating because I guess people forget, myself included, certainly that stress is biologically designed to help you. It allows you to, you know, focus, energy levels up. But, you know, so commonly it's thought of as like, you know, excessive, um, mm -hmm. you know, and something to, you know, fight or throw away. Um, and it's why it's fascinating to hear you say that like, no, no, you can use your stress. Mm -hmm. You can use, you know, being keyed up to do something or to like, you know, exert yourself yeah. fully, what have you. Um, but with breath work, with proper breath work, you can, you know, channel all that into a level of focus. Right. Stress is really? our friend. Yeah. Stress I didn't just put words in your mouth. I'm just. No, you did it. You, it was perfect. I don't even need okay. to be here. This is great. You know exactly what you're you, you do need to be here. <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, there would be some serious challenges coming up. I'm like, all right, guys, here we are. You're like, I'm going to talk about <laughs> yoga. <laughs> you guys no. got to touch your toes, all of you. Right. No, stress is our friend. And, and I kind of make a joke when I show up to teach at a department. I'm like, if you thought the yoga teacher was here to take your stress away, sorry, that's not what's happening. Right. You know, because life is inherently stressful. That's how it's built, let alone the job that a first responder is doing. And if someone doesn't know how to work with their own system, these are our tools, the nervous system, the mind, the breath. These are tools we have to be elite, to be better, to be at top levels of functioning, but yeah. we're not given the manual on how to do it. And so all these powerful tools begin to own us. Right. You know, I mean, have you ever felt, I mean, I don't even need to ask you this. Like everyone feels this way. No, I'm an open book. Like, like you can't go to sleep because your mind is going crazy. Oh, right. Definitely. Thinking. And even right now during this time where like, we're okay. Right. We're all safe. We're okay. I'm, I'm, I'm healthy. A lot of people are healthy, even though a lot of people are getting ill right now too. A lot of people are healthy, but where does their fear come from? projection of thoughts yeah so that powerful mind we need to harness it it's fascinating i had a really good look at this the other night i have a five-month-old puppy she's a black labrador her name is louise and she's pretty new to the world um and there was some cooking going on and like a piece of food or something had fallen down into the base of the oven and was mm -hmm. setting off the smoke alarm and mm -hmm. the dog had never heard a smoke alarm ever and saw me like rush over and you know fanning frantically um, and her stress level happened a couple of times. Her stress level was absolutely at an 11 for like an hour and a half afterward. And yeah. it's kind of amazing to see like, you know, this puppy heretofore just been like, can we throw the ball? You know, like, what are you doing? I love you so much. Just, you know, happy, go lucky. And it was like absolutely gone, fully, totally gone, nowhere to be found. Yeah. Um, wasn't able to kind of process the stressor. Um, right. kind of brought my things dog, in. My dog's that way with the vacuum. Now my dog is 12. So she's been in the world for a while, but she's still a vacuum stresses her out. But it's actually really interesting. You can really see this happen in dogs a lot because they don't have the sort of crazy ego mind that we have that puts perceptions on what's happening. So you might have seen your dog do this is shake, shake afterwards. Right. Yeah, doing that. And we all she have a big ego, though, I will say it's it's <laughs> it started really small. She was like, I'm so happy to be here. And now, like. She's got control of her muscles and stuff like this. And she's getting a little like, cocky. From she's me. like, everyone loves me. I'm cute. She gets 350 kisses a day minimum, I would say. And it's going to her head. I know. I do the same thing to my dog. She's super stubborn now. She's 12. Yeah. You know, so they get cocky when they're young. They're cool in the middle. And then yeah. at the end, you know, they're like, I've lived long enough. I can call the shots around here. <laughs> 
but I didn't mean to interrupt you. So yeah, but generally it was like, you know, the dogs don't have an ego where we do have an ego is where I think we left off this kind yeah. of. Well, we have, you know, in yoga philosophy, they call that kind of the small mind. There's this bigger, higher consciousness mind. And then there's a smaller egoic mind. And the smaller egoic mind is the one that judges things, judges ourselves, judges each other. And in yoga, we're trying to transcend that and kind of come above that and use everything we have as a tool rather than identifying with it. And this is getting into some deep yoga philosophy that we don't need to go down that rabbit hole too much. But just know that that small mind is really the source of projected stress that's not there. So it's my mind that's going to be like, oh my God, what if I lose my job? What if this happens? What if that happens? But if we can transcend that using the tools that we have, we can actually have a calm and controlled system, which makes us, so if you think of a first responder, they're seeing chaos. It's a storm around them. If they can be the eye of the storm and have that control and that calm, they can make the proper um, commands and the, and the proper necessary next steps for everyone's safety. And that's easy to do when people are sort of first on the job sometimes because their, their brain is sharp. But years and years of cumulative stress, stress over and over again, even if it's small stressors, starts to dull the knife of the, the sharp decision-making part of our brain. Mm. But we need to continue to train it. Otherwise, I mean, that's essentially what burnout is and stress-based physical and mental health problems. So if you're going to go into a career where there's all this cumulative stress or traumatic stress, you need to proactively prepare yourself to keep your tools sharp. That's fascinating. I guess I never really thought about like um, uh, short-term stress being linked to burnout. If we're talking about the same yeah. thing, burnout, where you're just like, I don't have anything left in the tank. I got. I need a break from this, like a bigger break or you know, bigger. Yeah, chance. I mean. Yeah, burnout is your systems are just can't, you know, if this is stress, like good, bad, ugly, this is when you're activated. And this is where we normally live. Yeah. Pit the ceiling, you are on, right? You have that vision, you have that adrenaline, you're like ready to go. Now, if you're hitting the ceiling so much that you don't have the opportunity to come back down and you're living in that activated state, then when it's time to hit the ceiling, there's no ceiling to hit. Yep. There's nowhere to go. That's burnout. You can't, you know, you can't use all these tools. So they have to continuously um, get refined and get trained. And that's exactly what yoga offers. And I think when we're talking about mental health and, and wellness and public safety, a lot of times we're thinking about the really big bad stuff, like the tra really bad traumatic events, the critical incidents. Yeah. It's not just that. There are so many tiny stressors that people don't think about or think about recovering from um, that they start to build on each other and have the same effect as a traumatic event. All of this stuff, Dan, we, I mean, I specialize in cops and firefighters and paramedics and jail-based law enforcement and dispatchers, but all of us can relate to what I'm saying. Just right. imagine on a, a, a bigger level with public safety. Yeah, it's really fascinating. I guess that's another one I never thought about or the people out there I doubt did. It's like, yeah, even little things where you go like, ah, it's no big deal. You know, if you, I guess if you don't address those things and seek to recover from they, from them, they accumulate. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I 100%, it definitely does. I mean, mm -hmm. I compare it a lot to our oral hygiene, like taking care of oral hygiene. Okay, let's We're talk about it. Okay, let's talk about brushing our teeth let's. because you should do it twice a day for two minutes. Yep. Okay. And floss. Yep. Got a floss. Okay, great. So I've been taught that we've all been taught that when we were little. So we abuse our mouths all day. We eat, we drink, some people smoke, whatever. And then you regulate your sugar. oral sugar. We're always yes. harping on the sugar thing. I have a sweet sure. tooth and like I, I haven't had a cavity in a very long time. Thank God. But like, they're always talking about sugar being this thing, you know? You oh, sugar it. is terrible for many reasons. Yeah. Candy, you know, what, what have you, but how you, so imagine if you regulate your oral hygiene at the end of the day by right. brushing and flossing your teeth. Now imagine you didn't do that. So imagine you ate candy. I ate candy and imagine you never brushed your teeth. What would happen? I mean, that would be terrible. That'd be, it'd be terrible. 
Can I just get specific real quick? What's your favorite yeah. candy bar? You know what I had just before this to just what? make sure my blood sugar was up? Musketeers? No, they're okay. I like Snickers. I agree, it's just okay. Snickers yeah. is a phenomenal product. Snickers is great. My favorite is Almond Joy. Oh, that's another great one. Almond Joy is great. But what I have once a year, and I'm still going through the bag, is Robin's Eggs. You know Robin's Eggs? No, I don't know it. That sounds Dutch. They're basically, um, oh, what are they called? Whoppers. They're like Whoppers, but they're, Whoppers. they're repurposed what? for Easter. Oh, you know what I love about Easter candy? Quick tangent is that a lot of it is made specifically for Easter. So you're getting like more or less factory direct candy. Like for example, (laughs) I'm a big Reese's person. I absolutely love Reese's. I can't get enough Reese's. Um, I don't keep them around for that reason. Um, You know, but the, uh, the Easter version, that's a fresh egg. It's a whole egg. Like just ridiculous. They're so tasty. Oh my God. I have to tell you sort of what I've not, told anyone go ahead during no easter it's time, just you and me on this zoom There's it is this is it feels like just you and me so yeah. um sometimes during the easter time i'll have a couple of those Reese's eggs and like a beer oh yeah for dinner like nice. that's my dinner yeah that's 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 so <laughs> delicious. I don't know. does it have to be easter well, when you want them in that egg style. Yeah, the, I, I guess know. that's seasonal. You're right, you're right, you're right. So, I mean, these Whoppers, I've been having a couple because they're not too sweet, right. you know, because they're malts, you know, so it's not too sweet, but it gets Malt a little bit of the blood sugar yeah, up. It's not so saccharine. So anyway, so if you had, now we're back to this theory. So like you're having Robin's eggs and I'm having um, Reese's relentlessly and we're not upkeeping our oral hygiene at the end of the day, right. which is deplorable and, and disgusting, frankly. If I right. Say. So eventually, so cumulatively, your mouth, your teeth will rot, and yeah. soon your mouth is non-functional. You won't be able to use it because there are no teeth left. The gums are all diseased up, right? So imagine, Listen. now we can, we can see that. That's, that, that's visual. And you're like, yeah. oh God, I got to go to the dentist. Now the nervous system, you can't see it. It's not tangible. So mm. it's super easy to forget about. And can dismiss. you feel it? Oh, you feel it all the time, but... So when we feel it, we make excuses for it to be other things because the same Uh, thing happening to the nervous system when you don't regulate it, right. And you don't recover and, um, eventually it becomes non-functional the same way the mouth would become non-functional. The, uh, the non, the non-functional mouth, um, analogy is is so gruesome. All you have to do is a mouth that is so rotted that it no longer works. It's like, wait a second. So what does this look like? I have, I have no teeth or some, they are brown and falling out. My gums are black. My friends have disowned me. That's what happens if you don't do yoga is what I'm trying to say. I don't know. I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to eat candy anymore or I'm cutting back. I bet you that right you've never had a yoga teacher, like make that analogy before. Normally uh, yoga teachers give analogies of like sun, moons and stars and stuff. And I'm like, they all, it's all focusing on the positive. It's like, okay, now imagine that you are surfing but, the future right. on a carpet in the cosmos surrounded by moons that love you. Right. Yes. I, and that's not me. I'm like, your teeth will rot. Your teeth. That's now, how I eat. All of your teeth have fallen out of your head. Yeah. You live uh, in the gutter in Dubai. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. That's yeah. Exactly yeah. So, my teaching style. One more time. I said, now you know my teaching style. I do. It's working. I'm going to eat less candy. <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on little stressors too. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, it's being aware of it. It's having that tool. Like we have the brushing the teeth tool. I mean, imagine if you had a two minute tool that you could regulate your nervous system, like you regulate your oral hygiene. So let's talk a little bit about then, like, so you said, no, you definitely would feel it. Like if you weren't upkeeping with, you know, mm-hmm. your stressors. So like what, walk us through that a little bit. What is it, what does it feel like? And, and, and where does it go? Well, burnout is one of those things, right? Where you're not feeling your performance, whatever your performance is, is not up to snuff. It's not up to par. It's starting to fall down. You're not sleeping well. Um, you're not digesting well. Mm-hmm. So let's, so what is the nervous system control? Let's start with that. Cause all of those things would be effective, affected your nervous system controls digestion. 
it controls circulation, it controls respiration, um, it controls your brain. So if your nervous system is not functioning properly, all those things are going to be affected. Um, when we're under high stress, the nervous system and the hormones of the stress response pause functions of the body that are not needed to kill the bear. Because if we go back in ancient times, that's what the stress response is for, right. is to save our own lives, right? So you're going to pause digestion, pause lower immunity, pause reproductive re reproduction, go back into the survival part of your brain. This, this, is, this is another comparison for you. The survival part of your brain that's like, help me, I need to survive, and I got to fight or flee, I call that the Incredible Hulk. It okay. doesn't care what it's, what's in its way. Yeah. It's destroying. It's going to take care of the bear. Right. Up here, the prefrontal cortex, that's Bruce Banner. That is who is thinking critically and making decisions. It's my favorite cortex, by the way, prefrontal. Is it? Yeah. I like that cortex too. I'm going with that one. That cortex is gone as soon as you are in a high stress state. Now, the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala, the stress area, can communicate, but the prefrontal cortex has to be trained to stay on its game. So by practicing yoga, especially with that intention, you are exercising and firing up the prefrontal cortex. You're firing up different parts of your brain that keep you at a high functioning level while under stress. So if you're not doing these things, you're going to find out that you're not making decisions well, you are reacting emotionally instead of responding uh, calmly with regulation, you're not sleeping well, I'm just going to say it, you're not pooping well, all of those things that your body's able to do are compromised. And then so what's the, uh, what's the solution here? Well, um, we want to Put our hands on the tool on on the machine that is our nervous system and train it to be at its top level of functioning how do we get in to a system that we can't control so the part of the nervous system i'm talking about is the autonomic nervous system mm -hmm. autonomic automatic involuntary right i don't have to tell myself to breathe i don't have to tell myself to digest it happens automatically right so we need to get into that nervous system to be able to manipulate it, control it, and train it. Now, how do we do that? Here's a quiz for you. Out of all the things that happen automatically in our system, there are two, two of them that we also have conscious control over. You know what those two things are? Breathing has got to be one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also doing this right now, both of us. Besides breathing. Okay. Oh, it's automatic that we also have control over. You just did it twice. Blinking. Yes, you got it. Oh, that's it. That feels so good. Yeah. Hey, just pause for station identification. Anybody that's joining us, uh, this is 60 Second Docs Live. I am Dan. I, I run the, the, the series. And then I am here with Olivia Mead of First Responder Yoga. We did a video on her. It's fabulous. You should check it out. And we are talking about uh, the ever relevant practice of yoga and currently uh, voluntary slash involuntary aspects of it. Yeah. Back to you. So blinking and breathing. Blinking is just trivia. Forget about it. Breathing. That's what we want to get into. It's through manipulation of the breath work that we can get into our autonomic nervous system and also into our mental state. So before I was talking about how the mental state and breathing are connected. So if I was breathing like this, you could tell I'm activated. If I'm breathing like this, you can tell I'm regulated, right? Yeah. So the mind, the mental it's state. Too. It's crazy. I just yeah. did that to copy you and I immediately felt. 100%. Better. So if the mental state can dictate how I'm breathing, breathing can dictate my mental state. So if I asked you for the next five minutes, we're going to do this. <sighs> By the end of that, you'd be like, Should we try that for like 20 seconds. Okay. All right. Or you, I, I'll do, you don't have to, if, if you want. Do you have I'm a timer? To, what's that now? You have a timer? Uh, yeah, I do. I do. Um, how long would you recommend? 
Let's do 20 seconds and let's see how we feel. Okay. I'll do it too. Uh, if right. I pass out, I don't know, call 911. Oh, oh. Definitely will. Uh, okay. And then, okay, is it like full, <gasps> like that? I want you to fill up your torso like, like an accordion. Okay, I can do that. And we're gonna talk about that breath later because there is a reason to use that at another okay. point. Okay, right, here we go. I'm ready. Yep, three, two, one. Good. How are you feeling already? Yes. Lauren? It's like somebody's hunting me. You're almost there. You have five more seconds. Two and one. Cool. So how do you feel? Do you well, feel I'm relaxed or do you feel activated? No, I feel lightheaded and like somebody's trying to break into the house. Okay. So here's what's interesting. Oh, I'm dizzy. Yeah. Okay. So now I want you to inhale <laughs> and slowly exhale. Don't leave me, Dan. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> I just it's such a good job gone on off and I'd be like, um, hi from hey, uh, I guess I'm gonna take over. What, what do I do? So now if we want to regulate, we inhale, inhale for a count of three. Now exhale for a count of five, slowly. Three, two, one. Good. Inhale again. Try to do it through your nose and see if you can exhale out your nose for a count of five. Five, four. Three, two, one. Let's do it one more time. Inhale. Well, I can feel my heart really a lot. Exhale. Five, four, three, two, one. Now, how do you feel? I feel great. Cool. I feel so, great. You, you know, That's that crazy. activating breath we do use in yoga for certain reasons as well. The yogis believe that energy is carried on the breath. So we can manipulate our energy when we manipulate the breathing. Okay. This is, the right. number, this is the number one tool that we really use for first responders because they can control their whole system and their mind by controlling their breath. If they train that way, just like they train for everything else they do, then it's automatic out in the field. Sometimes people really are counting their breath out in the field to stay controlled, but at oh. this point, it can also be automatic. Literally counting it, huh? Do you yeah, mean like what this, we just did? Yeah, five, three, three five. five. We call yeah. that recovery breath. So say you are a citizen who's mad at me and you're Which yelling. Which I'm not. I'm a citizen no, who's pleased with you. Thank but you. I can imagine this. But if I needed to like respond, if I wanted to make sure I had my faculties, I would probably be to myself doing this breathing technique before I responded to you. Is that right? Yeah. And then if you train that way enough, like for me now, it's really automatic. So if I feel myself get activated, my breath becomes automatic to control myself. That's why we want to train for it. And we always start every training, yoga training we do with this breath work. And remind me, it's a five in, no, it's three and five out. Three and five out. So here's, I'm going to give you the three ingredients to hitting the calm button on your nervous system. All right, everybody write this down. Say that one more time. This sounds just so critical. Three ingredients yeah. that you need to hit the calm button on your nervous system. If you feel you're having an anxiety attack, if you are pissed off, anything where you're like, I need to get control and calm myself down. This is how you do it. Three ingredients. I'm writing it down. Breathe through your nose. Now at first, I know after activation, it could be hard to exclusively breathe through the nose because it's a smaller space to breathe in and out. It feels counterintuitive. Yeah, so you might have to use the mouth at first just to catch your breath, okay. but then really try to direct it to the nose. It forces the breath to be slower, deeper, and longer, and it also has a better effect on the brain. Oh. So nose breathing. Okay. Two, make sure the breath initiates from the belly. So instead of breathing up here, like this, because that's also activating. You want to get the breath, I'm going to stand up a second, down here to start off with. Yeah. Now I'm feeling my whole torso instead of just my chest. Hey, silly question. Should yeah. I should I allow my like belly to protrude while starting the breath? 
it will naturally do that. I don't want you to push it out. Like when we're like, look at my belly. Like you don't have to like push it out. I do do that by the way. Okay. Yeah. I, I know. That's why I wanted to stop you from doing that. Yeah. So <laughs> if you think of a diaphragm, right. And the diaphragm is up here in my rib cage like this. Yeah. When I inhale, it's going to do this. Yeah. Which means it's going to lessen the space, which means my belly is going to come out. I see. And so we have to, it's actually natural to do that. Okay. And then we want to extend the exhale longer than the inhale. Was that three? Third, that's the third ingredient. Was extend exhale? Yeah. So the exhale needs to be longer than the inhale. And so you're telling me that like, if I'm having a panic attack, if somebody's coming at me in an argument, if like, you know, um, I've had a car accident, like anything, like no matter what a person is dealing with, if you breathe through your nose, one, initiate breathing from the belly, two, and exhale longer than inhale, that that will regulate my stress straight up. Right, right. Every time. Yep. 10 out of 10 times. Yes, and but you can't just do it once and be like it didn't work. I mean, like you gotta keep going. Have to keep I, <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of us out there are at risk of that too. Yeah, I tried it; it was wrong. Right. It didn't work. So, because here's the thing: this All is right. like anything. It might take a good ten minutes of practice to really start to feel the effects, especially if you're really bound up or a high stress person. The more you practice this, the more the body will be like, "Oh, there's the calm button." Like now it takes me one breath to go from, ooh, I'm in an activated state. And then my body remembers and goes back to work. Yeah. So it's just, like, it's just like any other training you do. That's so cool. Yeah, I really felt it now that I think back when I was doing my huffing and, and then you had me flip flop it. Like it was a, a quick change. Yeah. It was a huge change and it was quick. Yeah. And, and we use that, I call that power breathing. We actually do that sort of forceful breath and do some breath retention. So what I'm teaching you, Dan, is the foundation. There are so many other breath techniques you can do to train your nervous system. Mm -hmm. It all comes back down to this foundation. And if, if you don't practice anything else, but what I call three part breath, so belly, ribs, chest, as you inhale, exhale, chest, ribs, belly, using those three ingredients, mm -hmm you will get the golden nugget of this training. Okay. Um, there, the yoga breath work is so extensive and you can go into that, but it all comes back to that foundational practice. So, and then would you do this with um, this breath work specifically with your first responders or what's- oh, 100%. This is the first thing I ever teach them. Okay. Because without this, everything else doesn't matter. I don't care if you're flexible. I don't care if you're upside down. I don't care if you are doing the splits or in a handstand. If you don't have this foundational practice, we're doing gymnastics. We're not doing yoga. And we really have to make sure that to know that whatever your body is capable, capable of is yoga. If you can't touch your toes, it doesn't matter. If you are breathing, if you are surrounding the, the, the physical part is there are many reasons for the physical part of yoga. But one of the reasons is a vehicle is a container for the breath and for the experience. Right. It, because we're moving the body, will strength and mobility be a result of that? Yes. And our little mind, to go back to the beginning, our little mind, our ego loves that because yeah. we have this over identification with our body. So we're like, oh, I'm flexible and strong. I'm good. I'm better. You know, and if I'm not, I'm not bad. as good. Yeah. You know? mm. I know. It's really such an obstacle. It's funny. I find myself like, I'm not really very athletic anymore. I used to be okay. It's like now I find myself when something falls out of the medicine cabinet and I grab it and I still have this little moment where it's like, yeah, that yeah. visine didn't get past Catholic. me. <laughs> Catholic, like, you know, why do I, I mean, like, it's cool that, that felt, it felt okay, but it feels kind of good. Well, and you know what? I don't think... <sighs> we, we need to be, we need to eliminate that. I think we just need to be aware of it. Yeah. So we're humans, which means we have 
small minds and egos. That's, that's part of being human. Yeah. And, you know, when all the yogis talk about transcending that and enlightenment and this and that, listen, that's a huge lifelong, many lifetime journey. What I think we can ask of ourselves now, because I do it too. I was watching a, a yoga video of me five years ago. I'm flipping upside down. I'm doing tricks. Now, five years later, and in a different season of my life, my physical yoga practice is slower. It's more yeah. deliberate. It's more rooted in the breath. I know that. Do I still, when I looked at that Facebook memory and saw me upside down balancing, felt bad about myself for not doing that now? 100%. Yeah. I'm only human. Right. But I was aware. I was like, oh, look, look at myself judging myself. Yep. And yep. That, that ability to be aware of it and then come back to what's true, that's yoga. Not the upside down stuff, the awareness. That's yoga. This is a really beneficial uh, little conversation. I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm. I mean, I think this stuff's super beneficial. Stuff. I've basically dedicated my life to it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully all you are uh, are benefiting from this too. For anybody just joining, this is Olivia Mead of First Responder Yoga. Check out the 60 Second Doc we did on her. Um, we're having a little convo here on 60 Second Docs Live, I believe we're calling this. And then, um, so let's talk a little bit about kind of like what you do, you know, teaching first responders. I, you know, I have, a, I have a, a, an inclination that you have a little surprise for us there. Am I correct? Yeah, so I have a special guest you do. That, I'll, that we'll bring. I'll bring on, um, and so so what? How we translate everything we've been talking about to a fire department, to a police department, is that it's actually closer than you think. If yoga is about mastering our mind and nervous system, that's yeah. what a cop and a firefighter and a dispatcher need to handle a high stress situation. So we take this yoga practice that's traditional, based in the ancient tradition of yoga. Mm -hmm. And we tailor it to the needs of first responders. So it's job specific. So yes. we're always saying, this is how you can apply it to work and life. Culturally informed, because they have a very strong old culture themselves, um, for the purposes of processing stress, building resilience, and enhancing job performance. So we start with the breath work that I just taught you. And then we start to add on layers until they're fully understanding how they can use this as a training tool for their job. For first, for firefighters, um, I actually over weeks start to have them add bunker gear as they're doing yoga. Bunker gear? Yeah, like firefighter gear. That's just the name for the firefighter gear? Bunker gear, turnout gear, yeah. Got it. I wasn't sure if you were taking us to another level. <laughs> no, firefighter. If they this, they're all ready for the bunker. The, the firefighter costume. <laughs> got it, got it, got it, got it. I said that when I uh, I was doing fire academy classes, and I said that to them as a joke. Ooh, they didn't like it being called a costume. They were like, this is our gear. I Which bet I, understand. I was trying to make a joke. Um, um, men's men. Not yes. Right. culturally insensitive here, but like guys that they, 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 they don't want to call the costume. No. And I did it on purpose just to like poke at them a little bit, but you know, when, with, with yoga, we, there's, um, I hear my dog out there. There. That's a special <laughs> guest. That my special guest is my dog. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, in a minute. Be like, um, we're always and your dog like immediately does like, five or three in five yeah, out no problem that, that would be a special guest if we I wouldn't put it past you I sh you know what she'd be a special guest to teach you about stress because she does not like to be locked out of the room right now she's not happy yeah but when we practice this you know this I'm kind good. of is funny because we're all practicing yoga at home now or exercising at home and speaking of dogs yeah. they get up in our grill right and bother us I do but so in typically we can go out to a yoga studio, this perfect serene situation for yoga. Okay. If that's what we think yoga is, we isolate that from real world stress. So the reason I put them in their bunker gear is because I want them to start associating this training with when they're in that gear. And right. if they're able to meet, to move and breathe at the same time, in their bunker gear doing yoga, they're practicing mindfulness. 
And then it's going to be automatic in their brain. When in, they're in that bunker gear again, they're going to automatically remember I'm moving, I'm breathing, I'm focusing. How am I standing? How am I moving? And we're making it job specific. It's also an extra added challenge of stress because if they train under stress by wearing the bunker gear in yoga, then they've already trained how to monitor their breathing under stress. That's ingenious. And then they're associating the bunker gear like, okay, when I put this on, like, here's my bat suit, you know, I'm good to go here rather than like, love- there's a fire. <laughs> right. I love that you called it a bat suit because I actually call it. Um, you were referring to like the bunker gears, the bat suit. I call doing the breath work your Iron Man suit because it puts me in, okay, I am in the mode. I am controlling my system. Mm. So I love that you said that because yeah, it is that association. I'm going to work and I'm not going to be succumbed to my stress. I am going to be in charge and in control because I have the tools to do it. And I am Batman. And I am Batman, Batman versus Superman. Yeah, right now. In fact, if you see that right there behind me. The, uh, that, the, the photo or the patches? Well, no, those are patches. That's, that's the cartoon photo. That's oh, uh, Lois Lane. Is it? And um, on my, my social media, it says Lois Lane of yoga. Because, cool. yeah, because when I first started doing this, I was also writing for a magazine. And I had a friend who said, uh, caught up with me and said, hey, what are you doing these days? I was like, well, I'm a journalist for a magazine and I'm also teaching yoga to first responders, you know, the true actual human heroes out there. She was like, so you're basically the lowest line of yoga. And I said, yes, I am. (laughs) (laughs) How do you do? Yes. Nice to meet you. So I thought, Dan, that I could show you how this basic breath work could be translated to full bunker gear by showing you a firefighter in bunker gear doing the yoga. Yes, Yes. that sounds great, that sounds great. I'm gonna take you down, hold on, can you still see me there? Are we in a firehouse? Yes. We're in my house, I live with a firefighter though. Oh, you do? Yeah, so that's how I'm able to use him as a prop sometimes. Here's a little tour, we're in Colorado, I believe. We're in Colorado, we're in my apartment. Where in Colorado are you? Um, Castle Rock, just south of Denver. Oh yeah. And um, I I do something else about that, but I forgot what I was going to say. Castle Rock is beautiful. There's all those like- I love um, it here. I love it here. The trees there are the best. So we're going into my garage. Is he here? He's here, all ready to go. Yes, look at this. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Dan. This is Eric. Hey Dan, I'm Eric. Nice to meet you. Hey Eric, so nice to meet you. Thanks for joining us. What a treat. So Eric um, is my fiance, full disclosure. Oh, congratulations. Uh, and thank you. We don't know when we're getting married or where because of this whole pandemic thing, but got time. we'll figure it out. Um, so Eric was my student for several months. And I believe I was your first, Yoga for First Responders was your first ex- exposure to yoga. Is that true? Correct. Yeah. yeah. You find it had job specific application? Yeah, so uh, he's great. gonna back me up here. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he is, yeah, and he's a, and he's wise too. Yeah. So uh, feedback from I was company officer, so feedback from my crew. I had a, a new guy on my crew, and it, uh-huh. we had one of those nights where it's just not bad calls, but midnight, three a.m., five a.m. Oh my! Calls, and he's like, I was able to get myself to sleep last night. And I was like, Yeah, how'd you do that? He's like, I was using the breathing techniques and what we learned in yoga, so I was able to calm himself and regulate himself. So it shows that it does work even in that regulation from even simple calls, absolutely. Incredible. And that's what I was actually talking about, that cumulative stress too. Like it wasn't big, bad, bad, traumatic calls, but it was still keeping them up at night and messing with their um, sleep patterns. So even though it wasn't traumatic calls, that's an example of cumulative stress and why you need this tool for the job, not just in case something big and bad happens. And so, then, and then it also works on the brain to body connection too. So like, I mean, obviously this stuff is cumbersome and bulky. And so if you're not paying attention where your hands are and where your feet are, uh, you can inadvertently put yourself into dangerous positions and situations on fire grounds, on car accidents, that kind of stuff. So just paying attention to where your feet are at, even while you're working with your upper body or working with your hands, or where your hands are at while you're moving, that kind of stuff. So that brain to body connection is also critical from, from this. Uh, yeah, I can't even imagine like how uh, useful it is to have body awareness as a firefighter. Right. Yeah. 
And that's what we're teaching yep. too. And then for law enforcement, it's about using your breath to read somebody else's breath when you're uh, interviewing them on the street or paying attention to what their next move is. You can judge a lot by how they're breathing or watching for those small, subtle body movements. But you have to be aware of yourself in order to be aware of them. So yeah, you can see how it works for both, uh, both professions pretty well. Fascinating. Yeah. So what we're going to do here, another thing that can be stressful is he's going to be putting on an air mask. He's not going to put on the air, but he's going to put on something that's a simulator to being on air, which is a blast mask. It's a training tool. Got it. And this, what he's putting on now, that can be super stressful for someone. They can feel very constricted. They can feel like they're, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it limits your visibility, obviously. It can give you a tunnel vision, claustrophobia. Claustrophobia, that's the word. I was tunnel vision, claustrophobia. So yeah. even just putting this on requires you to have control of yourself, of your system. Yes, indeed. So he's going to put the blast mask on and the helmet. And then um, we're going to take him through a sun salutation. Okay. A sun salutation is a very basic um, yoga move. You guys can see okay there? Yeah, that looks great. You want to come a little bit closer? Um, a sun salutation is a very basic drill that we teach. And he's going to combine how he's moving with how he's breathing. And that's creating that mindfulness and that brain-to-body connection and the attention to detail of where he's putting his body. I see. So he starts here in mountain pose. Wait, say that toward the camera. Oh, sorry. He's starting here in mountain pose. Okay. Okay. In mountain pose, he can start to put his Batman suit on, his Iron Man suit, where he is starting to move into his three-part breath mm -hmm. with the three ingredients of the calm button. Right. I might have him, as his teacher, direct him to move his toes in his boots, blade his fingers in his gloves, squeeze his shoulder blades. It's so cumbersome in there that it's so easy to get disconnected with your own body. Sure. When he starts breathing, and moving purposely, he's connected his brain with his body and his nervous system. Now, as he inhales, he's gonna lift his arms up overhead towards the ceiling. And a slow exhale to an outside 90 position, blading the fingers and lifting the chest. Inhale, reach the arms back up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, hands to thighs, halfway lift. Exhale, hands to the floor, feet back to a high plank position. And for now, Eric, turn to the side so they can see your full body. So he's in a high plank position like he's about to do a push-up. And I'm going to have him hold this. And he doesn't know how long I'm having him hold this. This is mimicking any kind of stress. So your body doesn't know if the bear is chasing you or if you're holding a high plank. It's going to react the same. Is that right? That that means we have an opportunity in a high plank in a controlled stressful experience to train how we respond mentally and neurologically. So while he's here, not happy with me right now, cause I'm keeping him in a high plank position. He's controlling that by monitoring his breathing and maybe giving himself a mental message of, I am strong. I am strong rather than the default message of, I hate this, this sucks, right? <laughs> He's going to change that perception of the stress from distress to you stress, the good kind of stress. From here, exhale, Eric, and bend your elbows. Go halfway down, so you're in a push-up position. Inhale, upward-facing dog. He lifts his chest. Exhale, downward-facing dog. Now, in downward facing dog, that was activating, right? The plank drill, doing all the planks. Yeah. Now, we're, that was just like, Dan, when you did the activating breath work. Okay. Now, he's going to regulate his system by doing inhaling for three counts and exhaling for five counts. And he's giving himself a mini recovery, just like when you brush your teeth after lunch, a mini recovery between the activation. Hmm. At the bottom of your exhale, Eric, walk the feet up to your hands. Hands to the thighs, halfway lift, big breath in. Exhale, forward fold, keep the length in the spine as long, you, as long as you can. Inhale, reverse the swan dive all the way up. And then a slow count to five as you lower your arms by your side, come to face forward again. And when they come to the bottom, instead of moving around or fidgeting or wasting all that energy, hone that energy by doing your three-part breath. 
and release. And that's the sun salutation. <laughs> you just look, wait, hold on, come back down. Look, it, I don't know how, this is a coincidence, but it kind of looks like you're in front of a green screen. Do you agree? Me right now? Yeah. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> It, it does. Like, it could be anywhere. It's all live. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, bravo. Thank you, Eric. That was incredible. How how heavy is that all, Eric? Well, when you're wearing the air bottle, I'll tell you in a second. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> About 50 to 55 pounds. 50 to 55 pounds with all of it or with the air bottle, too? Yes. Uh, what he's wearing right now is about 55 pounds. Man. What was it? With the air bottle. With the air bottle is how much? Oh, with the air bottle would be 50 to 55 pounds. And then you have axes and hoses and stuff. Oh yeah, with the tools on top of that, 75 pounds easy. Oh my God. Yeah, so we have to, so yoga is not just about relaxing, rolling around on the floor, talking about all the moons that you said <laughs> earlier, but it's actually about creating a manufactured stressful experience to be able to train under stress. Just incredible. Um, and then, so Eric, I don't know, this is cool. This is very cool. So Eric, how long have you been firefighting? So I was a firefighter for 13 years. Uh, I'm no longer a firefighter. I'm travel training firefighters now and doing with this profession. So. Very cool. Yeah. How many, so how many, like, uh, you may not even know this number, but like how many times were you called out like to a, to a fire? Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a hard one to tell. I mean, I honestly don't know. Uh, but the department I worked on was definitely not the busiest department in the world. And I was a volunteer firefighter before that. But uh, lots of good experiences, lots of memories, a lot of trauma to carry along with you as well. I mean, it all, it all sticks with you forever. So uh, once a firefighter, always a firefighter, as they say. But now I get the, uh, the ability and the enjoyment of going around and working and teaching, uh, quite frankly, with the ones that want to be the best are the ones that really hone in on this training. Well, you know, one thing, Dan, um, just like you saw him do one sun salutation, a couple weeks ago we did a fundraiser because Yoga for First Responders is a nonprofit. He did 100 of, 108 sun salutations in a row, just like that, to raise money. Yeah. In gear, in full gear. And the thing he said afterwards is that because of the tools he's now learned, he thinks he's a better he was a company officer, so a company officer and firefighter now than when he was on the job before. Wow. So it's interesting, and that's why he goes around, and I'm speaking for you, but goes around and trains other firefighters in this because it's like, let me teach you what I didn't know when I was younger. Right. Let's plug your organization. We've got a couple minutes left. So if people want to get involved and donate and support, like, share, follow, all that, Where what would they do? One second. <laughs> um, so yoga for first responders .org is our website. That's always a great place to start. It has all the information. We're yoga for first responders on all social media platforms. And I'm glad you asked about donate donating and fundraising because right now, because of the pandemic, um, the local government budgets are getting really hurt by this, especially in towns where they depend on sales tax. And so it's very difficult for them to have training. So we are doing a huge fundraising campaign right now because we don't want to have to have departments uh, need to pay for this. We want to be able to give it to them. Um, and so therefore that's where big donations and fundraising come in. On top of this, because we can't do in-person training, we've just launched an online platform and app. So if you go to your phone right now and you look up YFFR or uh, yoga for first responders it's called cyber academy is the name of our app you can download that and have um, on-demand classes that are super short breath work um, longer classes and we also want to get that to all of our first responders um, without a cost so the bigger fundraising we do the more we can do that well, man, what a noble cause. Um, let's all get out there and, and kick you some bucks. Yoga for first responders.org. YFFR is the app. Uh, love this. So, um, uh, and bravo also, Eric, and, and you know, to, to folks like you. Uh, it's just such an incredible thing that you do for people and society. And, you know, from all of us out here, uh, we just want to say thank you so much for uh, your sacrifice and continued passion in making things better. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You got it.
Um, okay, and then so this is the last the last little bit of the show. We do we do this segment um, that's been really funny. Um, some are funny and some are just kind of sweet. Um, but we comment on the comments. So um, I love two, it. Uh, Sixty second docs are across social media platforms um, more every day. It feels like now we're pretty regularly on uh, Reddit and Imager and TikTok and you know Giphy in addition to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I'm sitting in the back of my car, by the way. <laughs> that's where, to do these comments that's how i'm i'm hanging with you right now let's do it let's do it <laughs> we, we can comment on the comments anywhere at all Perfect. Um, so i've got i've got a handful here okay um the first one is from um seuss with an with, with s's s-u-s-e seuss von feist good on you lady exclamation point first responders need all the help we can get them you are saving lives um, I just wanted to comment that that's true. You are saving lives. I don't know if you've ever thought about it that way. Oh, it, you know, it's so funny. Like, you know how we call first responders heroes. And Eric even said this, like, I never dug that, he said, because I'm just doing my job, right? And I kind of feel the same way when I get compliments like that. I hear it and I internalize it. And I'm so happy to to get comments like that. But for me, it feels like my duty and my mission, and I just want to, um, I just want to serve those who serve. But thank you for that awesome compliment. Cheers to that. Yeah, no doubt. Um, the next one is from Alex Lynn. Um, I wish more police departments would require their deputies to exercise in this way or any way, frankly. <laughs> so this one, uh, maybe, uh, maybe saying that uh, police departments not exercising enough. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, that kind of sometimes gets into a bigger issue that we've come across with police departments, which is liability. Um, I have recently was on, um, I am on the physical fitness chair for the National Tactical Officers Association, and we were creating physical fitness standards for SWAT operators. We had to be super, super careful because if you require physical fitness standards, if they get injured training for it, it could be on the department. Oh, so. Yeah. Yeah, so it's so we kind of get into some bigger issues with that too, which is why it's a little tricky. But I wish we could figure it out because it's the source of all health. Yeah, yeah, it really is. I said that with with some some lightheartedness, but I gather it's also um, pretty true. It's fascinating to hear that that SWAT team need uh, like more physical fitness standards. In my mind's eye, SWAT team are like you know Navy SEALs, just you know moonlighting. They typically are. They typically are. And they love this stuff. You know, Dan, this is the, the ones that dig this the most are those elite performers like SWAT operators. Dope. I love it. I wish I was a SWAT operator. Next one is from uh, Andy Mason. Um, uh, Andy writes, clever way for a girl to go get physical with a bunch of firefighters. Ha ha. Well, I found yeah. my fiance that way. So oh. uh, <laughs> I got to make this clear. I dated a student one time and I'm marrying him. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> you did it right. But that's hysterical. It's funny. There's a bunch of like, uh, you know, the little Facebook reactions and like, there's a couple thumbs up or whatever. And the ones that's what that's like guffawing. And there's a bunch of like angry ones. So people kind of piled on, piled on Andy. Um, yeah. I, I picked that one because I knew that you um, are marrying yeah. somebody your class yeah you know that's that's okay and and but i'll tell you to add in a serious note with that is when i teach when we train teachers because we have hundreds of teachers teaching our methodology across yeah. the world we we reached this is cool dan last year 2019 we had over 12,000 first responder participants on yoga mats with all between all our teachers which is really cool but Love we train that. our teachers to be very clear with boundaries with our students as well um and we do have male teachers so it's also understandable. I think like pretty much objectively, uh, firefighters are attractive. I, I think, think so. I think that, you know, but actually, you know, it's funny, the calendars that we, we all know of those firefighter calendars, those ain't my students, man. That's not what they look like. Right. They look, they're, they're bald middle-aged guys. And those are super attractive guys too. Okay. Yes. But yeah. I'm just saying it's not all the calendars. I think that the appeal though is just so real. There's a reason why it's a calendar everywhere. You know, it's like these guys are like going to go in there and like risk their lives to save the yeah. and the dogs and they get the cat out from the tree and all this. Yeah. Um, all right. We got time for, for two more. Um, this one's from underscore Mila.cu. 
and that person writes, yoga is unhealthy, bro. And then <laughs> I love, I love haters. Uh, and then, uh, and then Tanya underscore pray bro underscore CTM. These names are wild. How LMAO. And then Mila replies at Tanya Totoro is, is just bad for your bones. Cause you're overdoing them and stuff. That sounds so intelligent. Yeah. Got to get out there with the truth. Thank you, Mila. <laughs> she is throwing down some truth bombs. It is, is, is just bad for your bro, your bones, bro. <laughs> Thank you. My God, I would have done yoga. Oh. I know. Now I should probably stop and fold that the whole thing. <laughs> we all, you know, <laughs> and then the, the FCC came out with things or whatever. Um, at any rate. Okay. And then the last one is from Cecilia Aguiar, seven, 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 five sevens. Olivia, thank you for sharing your techniques with, uh, to first responders. I myself teach chair yoga at the wellness center LA to chronically ill clients. I have seen the positive changes in my clients. Kudos to you. Oh, and kudos to you, five sevens. That's five awesome. Sevens to see yeah. Um, and that one, you know, will take us to the finish line with this uh, episode. Um, we share these sentiments. It's just really lovely that you are bringing positive changes and awareness um, into the world. For everybody, once again, yogaforfirstresponders.org. Uh, they need support especially in these times, let's make it happen and, and, and help them. And then, uh, man, such a pleasure spending time with you, Olivia. Thank you for coming on the this show. It was fun talking with you, Dan. Thanks so much. Yeah. Our pleasure. And thank you once again, to your incredible fiance. Like what an, what a beautiful time. I don't know. Yeah. I think so too. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Dan. See you. Bye now.